it's Elias here, and welcome back to more Let's Play Kirby the Amazing Mirror. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this right now. This is post commentary. For some reason, my live commentary was really delayed behind the games, video, and audio, so I couldn't fix it, so I scrapped the live commentary, and I'm just gonna have to tell you what I did. So, if you remember in the last episode, in the very first episode, I should say, we took out the very first boss in the Moonlight Mansion. So, we opened up this new area, and we entered it, and in that giant chest was the map to Rainbow Route. So, we're just gonna take the left passage here, because we can. We're just gonna try and explore as much as we can. This episode's going to mostly be us discovering, hopefully, a new area. Alright, and also this was after a practice file, so some of these chests were already open, which means that obviously I can't show you what was in it, but I can let you know which chests had important items, and I can tell you for a fact that that small chest did not have anything important. It was probably like cherry, or maybe it was a one up. Nothing that special. So, I'm not entirely sure if every single chest counts towards completion of the game. I think only the important chests do, but I would still go out of my way to get every chest if I were you. So, it looks like the backdrop has changed. It's all purple and cavey. So maybe we're going to approach a new area soon. I don't know, let's find out. Oh, okay, here's something I should mention. Um, <clears throat> at the end of that last screen, there was a wheelie trap. You notice how a wheelie would be really useful in this area? Well, that's something that I like to do in this game. If you see a lone enemy all by itself that gives you a power, odds are you'll need that power. Or at least it'll be pretty useful to get that power for the upcoming screens. So that's a little tip. And if you look in the bottom right corner, we are now in World 3 Cabbage Cavern. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and say right now, Cabbage Cavern is my least favorite world of the game. Just because it's dark, it's smelly, it's cavey, and there's lots of water in it. And Nobody likes water levels, and I'm no different. Also, this place can be very confusing because most of the stages loop together in a giant circle, so that gets annoying. But the first thing we want to do when we discover the new area is try to find the map. We were lucky enough with Rainbow Route and Moonlight Mansion where they just handed us the map, but we're going to actually have to go all our way and explore. Cabbage Cavern in order to find its map. And if you notice there, there was a block that we destroyed because it was an enemy. And that's something you'll discover later on. Towards further in the game, the blocks will start disguising themselves as enemies. And it gets kind of annoying when there's a giant field of blocks and you're not sure which ones are blockings and which ones aren't. And also something I missed just a couple seconds ago was the first death in Let's Play. And yeah, so that wasn't really cool. Alright, also, um, we got a puzzle here. We're going to try and get that chest, but we have to run. But it doesn't look like we're quick enough to get that. I think I tried two or three more times and just gave up, but I'll show up small clip at the end of the video where I do get that chest. I believe it's a music note that's in there, but I'll validate that at the end of this video for you. Alright, well, we're continuing in Cabbage Cavern, and not really much to talk about here, but yeah, um, I guess I should talk about post-commentary. I'm not a big fan of it, as in I don't generally like watching Let's Plays if you post commentary, although I truly don't mind it that much. 
I definitely see how it has its uses. Doing this now, I know live commentary is difficult because you have to think up of stuff to talk about on the spot while you're playing the game. So it's difficult to divide your attention to both your gameplay and to have something interesting to talk about. Whereas post commentary, there's no real stress of having to worry about playing badly or thinking of what to talk about. You kind of have all the time in the world you need to talk about what you need to talk about. So I guess it's easier in that aspect. And if the next video glitches out like it did with this one, until I can figure out how to fix it, probably the rest of my videos for a while will be post commentary. So I guess it makes things easier for me, but I would much rather do live commentary. But, uh, I was mumbling, or not really mumbling, but I was ranting, and while I was doing that, I obtained the Cabbage Cavern map. I don't know why, but I really found it quickly in this playthrough. I guess I got lucky. On most of my playthroughs, I have a hard time finding the map, mostly because I just take the wrong way. So, that's another reason why I hate the Cabbage Cavern. Yep, yeah, I'm making my way down. And I thought that was funny when I recorded this, how I killed the boxing. It was dead, but the friend absorbed the corpse and still managed to get his power. I thought that was funny. And here I should have followed the general rule, sword beats fist every time. And here, if you notice, is a giant door. This leads to a goal game. Goal games are basically just mini games where you get to collect lots of items and it returns you to the main hub. The harder the goal it is to reach, the longer the goal game goes on, so the more time you have to collect items. And you also get a mini Kirby dance at the end of it, as you'll see here. Yay! Alright, so as you see, we're back here in the Uber world, I guess you want to call it that, hub world. So, yeah, we got our first goal. I'm not sure if goals count towards 100% either, but I'll go ahead and try and get them anyways. But, yeah, anyway. If you notice, there were a few branching paths that we missed on our first way this way, so we get to keep heading left and explore all the ways to explore this way before we take any other path. Because the more paths you take, the more confusing this game gets, since it is a giant overarching world that isn't linear. And so, I don't know why. I picked up Tornado Kirby there. I guess I thought for a second I was playing Kirby Squeak Squad, thinking it was useful, but no. I think I ditch it here in a few minutes. Yeah, I lose it. I don't think I bother to pick it up. Yeah. And here I get one of my favorite powers, Stone Kirby. Which makes it useful to get all these enemies out of the way here. And wow, it looks like the game audio is starting to desync again. But, I don't know, the game was lagging on me a little bit before. Probably because my computer's not really that great. So, yeah, I think that's the reason why my audio keeps desyncing here on the game. I think it's because of the lag. But, phew, I was lucky there with that baddie. He eventually left me alone. If he kept flying around my face like that, I would have been stuck as a rock and I couldn't do anything about it. And here it looks like we're in the Cabbage Cavern, but we're not. It says we're still in the Rainbow Route, World 1. So I guess I should go ahead and explain Rainbow Route. I think I do that here in this video. Yeah. See, Rainbow Route is not only the largest world, but it goes to most of the areas. See, Area 3, Area 9, Area 5, 4, 2. See, Rainbow Route kind of connects to most of the world in this game, so it's useful for unlocking all the worlds because you kind of have to get to them. And it looks like I'm about to die, so I didn't care. 
Well, luckily the stone carry I'm invincible, so that helps. But mini boss time. So I am going to phone for friends because I am near death. And by near death I mean I am dead. So yeah, that game audio is really laggy right now. So I'll just pick up some random power to hopefully defeat Master Hand. That's right, I always loved this boss as a kid because I never really played the Smash Brothers games, but I knew where he came from. I always thought it was so cool that you got to find Master Hand. He has mostly the same attacks as from the games, and as a result, he gives you my favorite power in this entire game. I know I said Stone was my favorite earlier, but no, it's actually this one because it's so versatile. You have every single power from the Smash Brothers game. You have your hammer, your sword, your stone, and your quick punching fists. So, yeah, Smash Kirby is pretty awesome. I thought for sure here, with this giant field of blocks, that there would be some blockers in it. But, believe it or not, there wasn't. And, I just head on to the ball game. I don't know what I was doing here. I think I was trying to get onto the warp star by using the cutter the up attack, but it shows you can just get a food and hope star when you leave that. Yeah, look at that game audio glitch. Ugh, I'm sorry about that guys. I apologize once again in advance about that, but I'm gonna try and see what I can do to fix it. But as far as I know, I'm, I'm lost. I don't know how to do it because I record this using my emulator. I recorded AVI on the Visual Boy Advance, which is why I have no way, as far as I know, there's no way to go in to the files of that recording and basically edit it. So, yeah. I'll see what I can do if there's people out there watching this who can give me some help, maybe help me figure out how to fix it. I would very much appreciate it. And, yeah, it looks like we're approaching the end of this video, but there's one more path that I wanted to start off with to start the next episode in. So we're going to make our way to that door, and that's where I'm going to end the video. So you got to try to find something to talk about. Oh, okay, no, no, we're here. This is the door I wanted to get to, so I want to thank you all for watching this. So please rate, subscribe, comment, do whatever if you liked it. Once again, I'm Elias, and see us next time.